rumor has it that Meghan Markle is a bit worried about what might happen if Harry acts a bit strange. She's concerned she might get left behind or, heaven forbid, lose her main source of support. So it's no surprise Meghan wants Harry to make things official. But let's switch gears and chat about something else. How was your day? Feeling good. Staying healthy. I hope you and your loved ones are doing well. Stick around for our videos. They're not just for fun, but also packed with useful info. Hello, friends. Welcome back to the King YouTube channel. All right, let's dive in. Lady Victoria Harry noticed something interesting during a polo match. Meghan Markle seemed determined to mark her territory when another woman tried to cozy up to Prince Harry. Meghan was well aware that cameras were rolling, especially since they were in line for a hefty paycheck from Netflix. So she seized the chance to make a statement on screen. It was like she was saying, hey world, I'm still a big deal and this guy right here, yeah, he's mine. She even made sure no one encroached on Harry's space during the trophy ceremony. But let's be real, Meghan's affection for Harry might not run that deep. She probably just sees him as a handy asset. After all, she's not done taking advantage of him yet. For those who might not know yet, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle were at the Alley Polo Cup in Florida, showing their support for the annual polo tournament that benefits Alley, a charity co-founded by Harry in 2006. Ali's mission is to uplift and empower youth in Southern Africa. Now about Meghan's behavior, a well-known editor had some thoughts on it, saying Meghan's true self was showing when she reacted to the woman trying to stand next to Harry. Her actions certainly didn't go unnoticed. Meghan was acting like her usual bossy self, rudely pushing the woman away from Harry and positioning herself next to him instead. She literally pointed and told the woman to move, as if she was trying to steal her man. Seriously, who does she think she is? It's just plain ignorant and trashy behavior. Can you believe it? But here's the kicker the woman Megan shoved aside wasn't just anyone. She wasn't some random pretty face. Her name is actually Dr. Sophie Ka, and she's the head of Prince Harry's charity. Meghan Markle doesn't even deserve to stand next to her, honestly. Imagine how embarrassing it must be for Harry to have a wife like Meghan. But the craziness didn't stop there. Harry's team won both matches with about 300 people watching. So he snagged a little trophy, and to top it off, he got a kiss from Meghan when he received the award. I bet Harry and Meghan were just beaming with pride in that moment. Except it seems Harry got a bit carried away. He seemed to forget that it was the whole team's effort that led to victory. Instead, he took all the credit, acting like he single-handedly won the game. It's moments like this that make me think Harry and Meghan are truly made for each other, a pair of self-centered losers. By now, we're pretty used to seeing Meghan Markle glued to Harry's side all the time. The lady Meghan tried to push aside was Dr. Sophie Chinaka, the chairperson of the Alley Charity. It makes you wonder, why didn't she present the trophy? Meghan has no connection to Alley. It's like with Invictus, Meghan just has to insert herself into everything Harry does. But what's the deal with Harry and Meghan? Meghan presenting a prize for something she knows nothing about just doesn't add up. I can't figure out who they think they are. The messed up dynamic between Harry and Meghan has been clear for years, but people don't seem to care much because, well, Harry's turned his back on his family and country, so why should we care? If Harry ends up becoming a U.S. citizen, it'll just be another tie to his family that Meghan has torn apart. It seems like her life's mission, doesn't it? Meghan's pushing Harry further and further away from everyone who cares about him. She wants to cut him off from his family, his friends, and I'm worried Harry might already be completely under her control. At this point, he's got nothing to do with Britain anymore. And you know what? Life for Brits might just get a whole lot better without that traitor in the picture. But there's another serious issue we need to address Harry's selective support for animals. Polo might seem glamorous, but it's actually a pretty cruel sport, especially the way Harry plays it. Sure, there might be some polo players who treat their ponies well, but not Harry. Harry has been accused of using spurs excessively, causing ponies to bleed when he rides them. He's even been linked to the death of his supposed favorite horse, a pregnant mare he insisted on riding despite being advised against it. But Meghan Markle stays silent on all of this, instead basking in the glory for her own gain. Honestly, I'd say Harry is incredibly cruel and abusive towards animals. He essentially killed that poor mare and her unborn foal. As an animal lover, I can't stand people like Harry. It's hypocritical of Harry to speak out about protecting the environment and promoting ecotourism when he's harming animals. Who does he think he is? He and Meghan are total hypocrites. The charity has nothing to do with Meghan Markle. She had no business being in that photo. Harry is one of the founders, okay? So this woman should have been photographed beside Harry, not Meghan. 
Sophie, a.k.a., should have presented the trophy, not Megan. It made no sense for Megan to give Harry the trophy. I guess Megan is just so insecure that she's afraid someone might steal Harry away from her. But seriously, why would anyone want to? Megan needs to get a grip. Why do you think Harry was so desperate to marry her in the first place? Nobody else wanted him. And that was when he was younger, more attractive, and we knew less about what a terrible personality he has. Actually, I'd say Harry and Meghan are perfect for each other because at least that way nobody else has to deal with them. Meghan needs to wake up and see the truth her supposed friends are just using her, much like she uses them. And has Meghan truly got control over anything, or are other people pulling the strings? Has she let them control her? At the end of the day, we can't say for sure, but I'm definitely suspicious. There's more to this than meets the eye. Who does she think she is, anyway? She should be ashamed of herself for pushing her way into the spotlight. She didn't belong there. Reagan doesn't play polo, and I highly doubt she even knows how. She didn't compete, she's not on the team, yet there she was, hogging the spotlight in a team photo. It's unbelievable, really. You don't see other wives behaving like that, do you? Meghan Markle should have known her place and stayed on the sidelines. She was just a spectator like everyone else. But no, she can't stand not being the center of attention. She has to be the one getting all the praise. Talk about spoiled. If you take a closer look, things don't look good for Harry either. He's essentially using his position as patron of Scent Ballet to create content for Netflix, which is pretty appalling. It's similar to how he exploited his role as patron of the Invictus Games to create content for him and Megan to profit from their Netflix deal. As for Megan, money seems to be her top priority. And if she suddenly starts acting kind, well, that's even more concerning because it's likely she's scheming something and trying to appear close to Harry to save face when their Netflix video comes out. But whether the video is released or not, people are just fed up with them. We're over it. They're just living in their own little world. Meghan Markle is such a control freak. Did you see how she talked to that lady? It was the same way she ordered her assistant to fetch her a Sharpie to write those messages on the bananas. She's just so impulsive, never thinking through her actions and oblivious to how terrible she comes across. Meghan uses that same bossy attitude with everyone, even her own biological parents who don't get any respect from her, despite being part of the reason she is who she is today. I do feel sorry for her parents on some level. Imagine having a child like Meghan Markle. And Meghan's treatment of the royal family is just as awful. She behaves that way with everyone. You can't expect any compassion or kindness from someone like her. What's with their excessive PDAs? Do they think they're teenagers? Their public displays of affection are just gross and disrespectful to everyone around them. It was a crowded place, yet they acted like they were the only ones there. Showing such inappropriate affection can make others feel really embarrassed and uncomfortable. Honestly, in some cases, it could even be considered harassment. Their PDA made people who didn't want to see it feel insecure. It's truly obnoxious behavior, and I can't stand it when they act like that. At this point, nobody can deny who Megan really is. She's fake, she's evil, and now we see her true colors. She exhibits this bossy, controlling attitude towards everyone. And she and Harry insist on this absurd PDEA, while Harry seems oblivious to others' efforts. The photos reveal a lot about what's going on behind the scenes. Now let's take a look at William and Kate's love story for some lessons. Their love is effortless, they don't have to force it. That's true love, and people admire what they have. William and Kate, the future king and queen, know how to behave in public. They understand the importance of keeping PDAs private. Realistically, Harry and Meghan don't stand a chance against William and Kate. They're not even close. Knowing Meghan, it was less about marking Harry as hers forever and more about ensuring she wouldn't be left out of the photos. If Dr. Sophie was beside Harry, photos might appear in the media without Meghan front and center, or worse, she might not even appear in the photos. How could she allow that? Ali existed before Harry met Meghan, just like Invictus. Both were under Prince Harry's royal umbrella. But Meghan completely controls him now. She's broken him, using him to gain money and fame for herself. And Harry just follows her everywhere, even on those awkward walks through parking lots. Maybe if Harry takes a step, Meghan has to take one two to assert control. If that's the case, his life must be miserable. No wonder he always looks so unhappy. I also sympathize with the innocent people who suffer from Meghan and Harry's spiteful behavior. It's completely unacceptable. So the Netflix cameras were supposedly there to film the polo match and educate the world about polo, I guess. 
but who really wants to learn about polo from someone like Harry, who's abusive and uses spurs on his horses. It just makes polo look like a pathetic, cruel sport. I'm not even sure what else to say to Harry and Meghan, but please tell me I'm not alone here. Please tell me I'm not the only one who has a real issue with their behavior. Leave a comment below to share your thoughts about Harry and Meghan. In a crowded place, I wouldn't want to show excessive affection like Harry and Meghan do. Making out with my significant other in public? No thanks. And if I saw others doing that, I'd probably feel pretty uncomfortable, maybe even queasy. Some people might think it's a great way to show love and connection, but I see it as just putting on a show. While some argue that people have the right to express their feelings and shouldn't be stopped, I disagree. I believe showing excessive affection in crowded places is a violation of others' privacy and incredibly disrespectful to those around you. After all, public space is just that public. It's shared space meant to be shared with others, and people need to consider how excessive displays of affection can make others feel. It can make others feel really uncomfortable and icky. Share your opinion below. Anyway, Megan's ridiculous behavior didn't stop there. People were even more shocked by her unacceptable behavior after the match. Meghan Markle acts like a spoiled child, and they're filming a new Netflix series. I can't imagine how angry people will be when it's released. After the match, Harry and Meghan met Nacho Figueres' family, who is supposedly one of Harry's close friends. They took photos for Netflix as Meghan and Harry filmed scenes for Harry's upcoming series about polo. The most surprising and probably inappropriate thing was Meghan Markle hugging Nacho while appearing with him, his wife Delfina, and their eight-year-old daughter Alba in Palm Beach, Florida. Meghan Markle certainly doesn't keep any distance from Harry's friends, so it seems like she's planning on flirting with them too. It's ridiculous. If I were Delphia, Nacho's wife, I would shove Meghan away just like Meghan pushed Doctor. Sophie out of the way. Megan acted so ignorant and disrespectful when she was on stage giving out the award at the Sanavali Polo Cup. How dare she hug somebody else's husband while doctor. Sophie just stood there politely. Even kids don't get a pass with Megan. She's rude with them too. There was a time when she was also rude to the daughter of an athlete. I wonder what kind of example Megan is setting for her own kids if they exist. I hope those kids grow up to be good people, though it would be surprising with Megan as their mother. But who knows? Parents really do influence their children's behavior. Kids often follow in their parents' footsteps, even if their parents were poor role models. It's hard to break that cycle. Most parents try to raise their kids to be good people. But then you have narcissistic individuals like Megan, who raise their kids to believe they're better than everyone else, entitled to things they're not entitled to. The meeting was also captured during filming for this Netflix series on Polo, one of a couple of nonfiction series commissioned by Netflix. What happened next was incredibly cringy. Meghan Markle approached Nacho's wife with both arms out for a hug. Now, this gesture is very intimate and affectionate, akin to a small child seeking affection from a parent. Then we see the two women walking with their arms around each other, heads close together. I'm sure this was carefully planned. Meghan Markle is calculating if nothing else. It's strange how Meghan always uses these displays of affection with others to portray herself as loving, kind, and good behind the scenes. But nobody's buying it. It's all so fake and cringy. Meghan Markle really is so immature, I swear. She's got the maturity of about an 11-year-old. It's very predictable at this point. Meghan wants to act like she's so innocent and sweet with people she doesn't know all that well, especially if they're more of Harry's friends. So Nacho and his wife, Delfina, might be best friends with the Duke and Duchess of Hypocrisy, but they didn't invite the two of them to stay with them in their Wellington, Florida mansion while they were in Florida. So how close are they really? I think it's just a series of prearranged scenarios for Netflix. It looks to me like Netflix paid Delfina to appear to be besties with Meghan Markle, but I hope she got paid well for that because she deserves it. I mean, that's quite a role she had to play. Harry and Meghan also claim they're working on a couple of TV shows for Netflix. Harry's will be about polo, and Meghan Markle is going to do a cooking show that also covers gardening and friendship, but it seems like Meghan is inserting herself into Harry's polo show. I wonder how often Harry will appear in Meghan Markle's cooking show. Suddenly, I had visions of their marriage being just as fake as their public image. It's obvious that Nacho and Delfina still hold some exploitative value for Meghan, but it won't last. Eventually, Nacho and his wife won't be useful anymore and will be discarded like all of Megan's other friends. It was funny to me how Megan insisted on wearing those stilettos to appear taller than she really is. It's another indication that Megan is completely obsessed with Catherine, 
She's jealous of Catherine's tall figure. Megan is short and boxy, and she needs to accept that. Also, Delphina is really tall and beautiful, so I'm sure Megan couldn't stand that. She couldn't allow Delphina to overshadow her. But let's see how long they can keep up this act of being rich and famous. It's really bizarre for a couple of people who chose to step away from their duties because they supposedly wanted a private life. Harry and Meghan claim they want privacy, yet they always insist on being in the media, being filmed, having photos taken of them, and doing these pseudo-royal tours. What are they talking about? They want privacy. It's also important to remember that Prince Harry, the living legend of aviation, failed the helicopter pilot test three separate times at best. He was a gunner. His brother, on the other hand, has been a Royal Air Force search and rescue pilot and also an air ambulance pilot. I think I know which one I consider to be a hero. And guess what? It's not that loser who has to buy awards for himself and also spend his entire deployment hiding out in the bunker playing video games. It's a very lucky thing indeed that the royal family, and indeed the entire country and the world for that matter, has William. I can't help but wonder what would happen to Britain if the royal family only had Harry, if William were never born and Harry were the heir. Honestly, I think it would be at risk of being colonized by another empire. That's how pathetic Harry is. You know, it's easy to feel for Harry and Meghan. Honestly, they both seem a bit immature and spoiled, don't they? It's like they both grew up feeling a bit neglected in their own ways. One had a mom who wasn't around much, and her dad tried too hard to make up for it. The other lost his mom when he was really young, and his nanny tried her best to fill that gap. They got everything they wanted, which might sound nice, but it's not always good. Then they met, fell in love, and somehow brought out the best in each other. It's no wonder people on both sides of the pond admire them for their love and strength, especially considering what they went through before. But sometimes it seems like they're stuck in the past, always focused on their own hardships. You know what they say, though, hurt people hurt people. Let's talk about that meeting with Nacho Figuera. Honestly, it felt like just another event where Meghan Markle made sure everyone knew she was the star. She's always pushing her cooking and gardening show. But let's be real, she's not exactly a culinary expert or a gardening guru. She just plucks fruits off trees for the cameras. Until Megan's around, she's always craving the spotlight. She acts like she's the center of everything, but it's clear she's not confident in herself. Harry didn't dare challenge her, though. He knew she'd shut him down instantly. Anyway, enough about them. Let's talk about something else, like the time the paparazzi caught Megan and Harry arguing at the Four Seasons Hotel. So, Megan and Harry's relationship hit a rough patch when cheating allegations emerged at the Four Seasons Hotel. Recently, Harry made headlines by declaring the U.S. as his main home, stirring up talk in the British press. This move follows their decision to step back from royal duties in 2020, adding more weight to the situation. Considering the timing, past controversies, and Harry's upbringing, it's clear their relationship is complicated and could face more challenges. While Harry aims for a calmer life, there are broader implications to consider. Harry's past, including his teenage experimentation with drugs, has put him under intense public scrutiny and could potentially embarrass the royal family. By opting to live permanently outside the UK, it might seem like Harry is trying to evade media attention and the pressures of royal life. This decision has fueled speculation about his relationship with Prince William, with ongoing reports of a feud between them. It's been talked about for years, and it's not just gossip, there's evidence that William disagreed with Harry's choice to step back from royal duties. Meghan Markle's marriage to Harry and their U.S. residency could further strain the emotional bond between the brothers due to the physical distance. Some argue that Harry and Meghan's desire for financial independence and the freedom to pursue philanthropy drove their decision, but I'm skeptical. Living in the U.S. does offer them more flexibility and freedom from royal protocols. It could also be a move to protect their family's privacy, given the intense media scrutiny they experienced in the UK, or at least that's what they want us to think. The true reasons behind Harry's decision remain uncertain, sparking intense debate about the monarchy's future. Public opinion on Harry and Meghan's move is split and view it as a betrayal of royal duty and tradition, while others see it as a brave pursuit of personal happiness and independence. Only time will tell if this decision marks a permanent departure or if there's a chance for reconciliation between Harry and his family. The drug abuse controversy doesn't directly explain Harry's move to America, but it adds complexity to his story. It highlights the challenges he faces in maintaining his royal image. Moving to America might seem like a way for him to escape this scrutiny and start anew without the weight of his past and royal ties. 
now about Meghan Markle removing her mask and revealing her true self to the public, I'd say it's always a delicate matter to judge someone's actions without knowing all the details. As for other topics related to the royal family, feel free to suggest them in the comments below. I hope this video resonates with you all. Don't forget to support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. Goodbye for now, and I'll be back with more videos on the King YouTube channel.